All right, good morning. Welcome to our uh, Sunday school service here. You know, over this uh, Memorial Day weekend, this, this beautiful day that, that God's given us. Um, you know, so, uh, all right, before we, uh, you, know, o- you know, open up here and, and begin, you know, let's, let's start with a word of prayer. So, you know, first, uh, you know, first of all, you know, being Memorial Day, you know, let, let's, let's remember all those that, you know, have served and uh, are, are currently serving, uh, you know, for, for our country. All right, and uh, does anyone else have any uh, requests that they, that they would like to uh, mention this morning? Uh, yes, let's uh, pray with those uh, families in Texas with that, uh, that horrible school shooting. Uh, does anyone else have any uh, requests they would like to make this morning? Okay, let's let's remember Jerry and uh, Johnny Brooks and uh, yes. Okay, now let's remember Luke with that uh, surgery this Wednesday. All right, anyone else? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's. It's you know always good to bring up those uh, praise items. So uh, thank you for that. And let's uh you know, yeah let's let, let's remember that request as well. Yes, Larry. Okay. So Will Bergen and Annette Callahan. Yes, okay, Let, let's remember that. All right, anyone else? All right, yeah, let's remember that uh, unspoken. All right, anyone else? Okay, well, let's uh, go ahead and open here in a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for this day that, that, that you've given us. Uh, Lord, we thank you for everything that uh, that you've done for us, and uh, you, know, you know, as individuals, and you know, as for you, and you know, saving our souls, Lord, and thank you for giving your Son for that. Uh, God, we thank you so much for uh, you know, the country that we're in, Lord, and uh, God, we just uh, thank you so much for the freedom to be able to come together here and worship you, uh, Lord. We ask that uh, you, know, you you would be with those that uh, we're going to be in remembrance of this uh, this weekend. You know, whether we, you know, whether they are serving have have served in the past or uh, you know, have lost their lives while serving, Lord. And uh, God, we pray that you would be with the uh, many requests that have been made this morning. God, we just ask that you would reach out and touch each one of those. And uh, Lord, we also ask that you be many w- with the, uh, many of the unspoken requests, Lord, and uh, the many requests in our bulletin. Uh, Lord, specifically, I, I, I would like to also you know, pray for our vacation Bible school that's coming up, Lord. You know, we, we see that that's... Uh, We'll be having a, a meeting today on that, and you know we know, we know that's a that's a great way to get ready and and reach out and uh, to our this community and, and be able to present the gospel for you, Lord and uh, God. I pray that you would be with uh, each of our Sunday school teachers, including myself, Lord. As you know, we've uh, you know, went through and prepared this week, Lord, that you would allow us just to be guided and directed by you, and in order to get across the message that you would like to get across to our classes, Lord. And God, I pray that you would be with you know, our, our classes here that uh, you, you've had in our care, Lord, that uh, you, you would allow us to uh, you know, strengthen them and, and allow them to be receptive of the uh, word that you would have to us deliver, Lord. And uh, God, I just ask that you would uh, you know, allow us all to be strengthened by that and be brought closer to you and uh, allow us to become better servants for you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so uh, we're going to look here into uh, three chapters this morning. So we're going to look at uh, Genesis 46, 47, and 48. You know, we're, we're looking at the uh, last days of a patriarch, you know, the last days of uh, Israel, Jacob, uh, is, is what we're going to be uh, 
what we're going to be looking into here. And so uh, let's start at uh, 46 and let's look at uh, the verses uh, 1 through 7. All right, and, and Israel uh, took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto God, uh, unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, and, the little, and their little ones, and their wives, and their wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him his sons, his sons' sons, with him his daughters, and his sons' daughters, and all his seed uh, brought he with him into Egypt. All right, so we see that, uh, you know, now it's, it's time for, uh, you know, Jacob to be brought uh, in, into Egypt, uh, you know, to, to meet Joseph. And so uh, we see that, you know, on the way, uh, he stops at Beersheba. You know, it's there on the, the border of, uh, of Canaan, you know, just before he goes into Egypt and goes into the desert. And uh, you know, there he makes his uh, sacrifices uh, to God. And uh, along with those sacrifices, you know, God comes to, comes to him uh, with visions. And you know, I, I, see, I, I love how you always see that, you know, he, that God calls out to Jacob, and, and Jacob says, you know, here I am. No, I'm, I'm ready to listen. You know, what, what, do you, what do you have to tell me, Lord? And then, uh, you know, God, again, r reminds, reminds Jacob of who he is. You know, that I am God, the God of thy father. And then he starts out again with, fear not. And so, you know, he reminds him that, uh, because I'm sure, you know, at his age, that he's probably, you know, thinking that, you know, this is a long journey. I'm going to go into this foreign land. You know, he's, he's nervous about it, but the first thing that God tells him to is not, is not to fear. You know, he, he reminds them, uh, and then he reminds him of, uh, of his promises. You know, he, don't, don't be afraid to go down into Egypt. I'm going to make you a great nation. And he, he reminds him again that he's going to go down with him, and then we see this promise that sh I will surely also bring thee up again. And so, uh, you know, we, we see here that, you know, not only is he, you know, promising him that, you know, he's, he's not going to be, uh, you know, staying in Egypt and, you know, buried in Egypt, but, uh, that, you know, that's also a promise to, you know, the, the nation of Israel that, you know, God's going to bring them back out again and going to bring them back to the promised land just as, you know, you're back to their inheritance just as he had promised. You know, it's the same way, we, you know, with... with you know, with Christ, you know, he, you know, through Christ and His sacrifice, we're going to be brought back to God you know, and, and receive our, you know, uh, heavenly inheritance just just as promised. Right, then we see this uh, next portion where it says, you know, Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes, you know, which which literally means that you know, Joseph is the one that's going to shut your eyes when you, when you die. You know, that he's going to be there with you, you know, through your through your death. And then we see here where he, everyone's gathered up and uh, you know, they're going to go down into Egypt. And uh, so these, uh, these next verses you know, we'll, we'll skip over. We're, we'll skip over 8 through, uh, through 25 because th th this just goes through the names of uh, all of Jacob's family, you know, his, his sons and his, and, and his daughters, Dinah, that, uh, or his daughter, Dinah, that... Uh, had went down with uh, had went down with Jacob, and so uh, let's look at uh, 26 here. And we're going to read uh, 26 through 34. Right, and it says uh, all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's three uh, sons' wives, all the souls were threescore and six. 
And the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt, were two, two souls, all the souls of the house of Jacob, which, which came into Egypt, were three score and ten. All right, so, uh, so I'm sure you're looking at the math and you're like, well, you've got you know, 66 and then you have 70. Yeah, so, so, so where's the, uh, where's the difference? Because if you go through and you look at the names of all of his sons, you're like, well, that, that would be, you know, we have a, we have a difference there. Well, the, the difference between the two is the, uh, is the 66 is going to take out Jacob and, uh, and his sons, uh, Manasseh and, e and Ephraim. And then, uh, it also takes out, uh, Onan and Ur because they had already passed away. And, uh, but you add in, uh, you know his his daughter Dinah, and that uh, and that comes to the sixty six, so that's why there's that. Uh, the, well, that's why it's off by one. If you if you go back and you're like, well, if we add back, you know Jacob and his sons, you know it, it wouldn't have added up. But you know when you go through and you're like, okay, we forgot these two that were deceased. They're counting them, and then that's that's the difference. That's why it's not seventy one versus the seventy. Right, and then it says, uh, and he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen, and to present himself unto him, and fell on his neck and wept, and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die since I have seen thy face, because thou art alive. And Joseph said unto his brethren, and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh, and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me, and the men are shepherds, and their trade hath, hath been to feed cattle. And they brought their flock, and their herds, and all that they have, and it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and say, What is your occupation? That ye shall say, Thy servant's trade uh, hath been about cattle. From our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. All right, so uh, you know, we see here that uh, you know, Joseph uh, made himself ready. He got his chariot ready and he went out to to um, to meet his father Jacob, and uh, you know, we we see that he falls on his neck and and he weeps there a great while. You know this has been years since they had seen each other, and he finally gets to see his father after all those years. And uh, you know J uh, you know Jacob is is so very excited, and you know he's he basically says you know now I can die. I, I've I've been able to come and see you, and you know now I can. Now I can die because I, I've been able to see your face and, and you are alive, just as just as was promised. You know, however, it's another 17 years after this meeting before uh, before Jacob finally uh, passes. But uh, and then you know Joseph says that he's going to go up and he's going to tell Pharaoh that you all are here. Right, I'm going to tell Pharaoh that you all are here, and then I. I'm going to tell them that, that you're shepherds, and I want you to tell them that, that, that you're shepherds as well, you know, both yourselves and, and uh, you know, that you've done this since your youth and, and, and your ancestors were shepherds, you know, so that they can live in, in Goshen there in that valley. And uh, he says here that, you know, every, every shepherd is an abomination of the Egyptians. You know, the, the Egyptians are, are, are a city kind of civilization. So, you know, they, 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 they are distrustful of these wandering nomads that, you know, carry the, that, that go around with these uh, cattle. So, uh, you know, they didn't really like to have them in the cities. And so it was their preference to have them out there in that valley off to themselves. All right, so let's look at, uh, at, at 47 here. And let's look at uh, verses uh, 1 through 12. Right, so uh, then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? 
And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. Yeah, so you know, here he is, you know, meeting him, bringing his uh, brothers with him. And you know, just, as, just as he said, Pharaoh asked them, you know, what, what's your occupation? What is it you do? And they answer that, you know, that your, your servants are our shepherds, both us and our ancestors. All right, so on to verse 4. All right, they said, uh, moreover unto Pharaoh, for to sojourn in the land uh, are we come, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And so, you know, again, this is just to reinforce the fact that, you know, they, they don't want anything, uh, you know, of the land. They're not trying to take over or anything like that. You know, we're just coming through. We're just coming with, through with our flocks. We just want to stay here and take care of our, our flocks here in Goshen. And then uh, on to verse 5. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. Okay, so uh, you know here we see that he tells them to go to the best of the land. You know that that land of Goshen, that most fertile of the uh, land there, and uh, and and beyond that, he says, you know, if if you have any men that are, uh, you know, that are equipped, you know, to you know to to lead or re, you know really know these cattle, that you can put them and make them ru rulers over my cattle as well. All right, and. Uh, we're going to go on. Let's look at uh, verse seven here, and uh, we, we we begin looking at uh, you know a, a, a Joseph bringing in Jacob. All right, and uh, Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And you see, so you know notice here that you know Joseph brings in in Jacob. And uh, you know, you know, Jacob begins to come in, and he starts to bless Pharaoh. And we notice that Pharaoh's question here is is more informal than the, the question that he had for his brothers. You know, his brothers were like, you know, what's your business? You know, what what you know, what are you doing? Uh, you know, whereas uh, Pharaoh, you know, looks at Jacob. I'm I'm sure that he sees that he's well up in age, and is like, how old are you? And so uh, let's look at uh, Jacob's response here in verse nine. And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the, day, have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the day of their pilgrimage. And so you know, Jacob tells him that he's 137, and then you know, we, we see that you know, just as... Yeah, he, he talks about you know his his days just being few and few and evil. You know, just as just as our days, you know, our our days of few few and, and evil. Uh, you know, through this pilgrimage, yeah, and he points out that he has not uh, you know made it to the uh, the same number of years as as his fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. And then uh, let's look at on to uh, verse ten here. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out before Pharaoh. And uh, Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them possession in the land of, of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of uh, Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. All right, so we see that uh, you know Joseph uh, you know, puts his puts his brethren, you know, as promised, uh, you know, in, in the land of Goshen. It talks about in the land of uh, Ramesses. That's the uh, closest ci city to uh, to that area. So that's that's why it's uh, mentioned there. And uh, you know, he puts them in the best of the land, just as Pharaoh had commanded. And then we see that uh, you know, just as Joseph had promised them that he would take care of them through this famine, we see that he, he nourishes his father and his brethren and all the household you know, with bread you know, according to their families, you know, just as he had promised them in the prior chapter. All right, so let's look at uh, these next uh, verses here, 13 through 26. 
And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for, corn which the, uh, for the corn which they had bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money faileth. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for flocks and for the cattle of the herds and for the asses. And he fed them with the bread of all their cattle for, what, for that year. When the year was ended, they came him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord, how our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herd of cattle. There is not aught in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? By us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them, so the land became Pharaoh's. And as the people and as for the people, he removed them to the cities from one of the borders of Egypt, even to the other thereof. Only the land of the, of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned to them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day, and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is the seed for you, and you shall sow the land. Or, yeah. And it came to pass in the increase that you shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own for the seed of the field, for your food, and for them of your, and for them of your households, and for the food of your little ones. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it law over the land of Egypt unto this day that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priests only, which became not Pharaoh's. All right, and so you know, we see that uh, because of this, this famine that the people you know, came, came to Joseph, and you know, first they were, they were purchasing it with money. But they used up all the money and uh, you know Joseph still had the the stores, and so uh, once the money failed, then they asked about trading him their some of their possessions, you know their their cattle. They trade off the cattle, uh, you know, in that in that second year. And then we see, um, or the first year, in the second year, uh, you know, they come and they say, well, we've spent all of our money. We, we've get, we've given you all of our cattle. The only thing we have left of our, is ourselves and uh, and our land. Uh, and so you know they say you know by us and our land you know we'll we'll be your servants and you can have our land uh, you know, for for this food. And we see that you know Joseph ends up buying all the land of Egypt and uh, you know having everyone as uh, servants for Pharaoh. Uh, because of that, except for the priests, because the priests had their own land that was given by Pharaoh and their own set of portion that was set off. And so uh, because of that, we, we see that uh, it comes to pass that everyone's going to give the uh, fifth part to Pharaoh uh, because of this, uh, because of this you know, horrible uh, you know, famine in the land. You know, but uh, you know, we, we see that you know, God had seen you know, Joseph through this and had... And he was there and, and prepared for that. All right, so let's look at uh, these uh, last verses here. It's uh, 27 through uh, 31. All right, and Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. 
You know, so, so, you know, notice that even though Egypt was going through this horrible struggle, that everyone had given out all their money, they given all, had, had to give all of their cattle, you know, they had to make themselves servants and, and give over their land to Pharaoh, that, you know, Israel, you know, they're in Goshen, they had possessions, and they grew and multiplied because, you know, God had, had blessed them and had taken care of them. All right, so uh, let's look at, you know, 28 here. And uh, Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the whole age of Jacob was 147 years. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, Now I have found grace in thy sight. Put, I pray thee, my hand under thy thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. But I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou, as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me, and he sware unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's, uh, the, uh, yeah, the bed's head. All right, so uh, we, we see here that you know, Jacob is coming. It's time for him to die, and he, he uh, calls Joseph in. And... Uh, you know, he says he's found favor in his sight, and then he asks him to, uh, yeah, to, to swear to him. And, and you, you notice that he says that, uh, you know, he, you know put, put your hand under my thigh, you know, just as uh, you know, we'd seen uh, you know, that before with, uh, you know, uh, any, anytime they, they make these uh, you know, covenants, these, these promises, you know, they'll, they'll put their hand under, under the thigh and, and give these promises. And so he, he says... Uh, he asks him to do that, and he asks him, to, and says, uh, "Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt." So you know, he asks him to, to promise that he's not going to bury him in Egypt; that he's going to take him to the land of his fathers to be buried. And then uh, you know, we see that uh, Joseph says that he's going to do as he said, and he he, he swears unto him. And then uh, we see that uh, you know Israel bows himself upon the uh, the bed's head. Right, so let's look at uh, 48 here. Uh, like there's maybe have been some time skipped, or this may be the same day. It, it, it doesn't say, but let's look at uh, 48 here, and we're going to look at the uh, you know, some of these uh, recounts of his of his faithfulness and you know, the, 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 some blessings here. Right, and it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told jo Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And he said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and will multiply thee, and I will make thee a multitude of people, and will give the land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. So we see here that uh, Jacob goes ahead and recounts that, uh, you know, his experience there at Bethel, that, um, you know, where, where God had, had given him the, these promises, that uh, you know, he would make them fruitful, multiply, and would make him a multitude of people, and that they would have this, uh, they would have this land, uh, you know, as a possession, uh, as this promise. All right, and then uh, let's look at uh, verse five here. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unt unto Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simeon, and they shall be mine. And so we see this this interesting uh, you know, promise here that you know, these two sons they're they're going to be he's going to count them as his just as you know, Reuben and 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 uh, Simeon so the, you know they're they're going to be ancestors of tribes as well just as just as his other sons were. Right, and then uh, let's look at uh, verse six here and it says, uh, "And thy issue or offspring, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine." And shall be called after the name of their brethren and their inheritance. So, all the rest of his children will be called after the name of uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, you know, after after their inheritance. 
And then uh, let's go on to uh, verse 7 here. And as for me, when I came from Pandan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan, in the way uh, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, in the same is Bethlehem. And so we see in verse you know, seven here, he, he recalls uh, you know, his, his journey with his final days and his, uh, his or you know, Rachel's final days with him, you know, that uh, you know, he tells that he was on the way and, and Rachel died by, beside me in Canaan. And then uh, he tells him that you know, she, she was buried you know, there at, at, at Bethlehem. And let's look at uh, verse eight here. Right. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who were these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were, were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them from between his knees and bowed himself with his face to the earth. And so we see that you know, here he's going to start uh, you know, calling his uh, Joseph's sons to him. You know, he, you know, he, he's, he's there and he asks, you know, who are these? And Joseph answers that you know, they're, they're his sons. And notice he, he gives the glory to God again. He says that you know, whom God have given me in this place and then uh, we see that uh, you know, Jacob asked to bless them. And then it's, it's pointed out here uh, that you know, the eyes of Israel were, were dim. You know, he couldn't see very well because, because of his age. And uh, we'll come back to that here in just a moment. So let's, let's keep that in mind. You know, he's, he's not able to see very well because of his age. And then uh, you know, here Israel says that uh, he, not ha he had not thought to even see his face, but, but look, God has shown me also your children as well. So not only have I got to see you again, but I've also lived long enough to see your children. And then uh, you know, we see that uh, you know, Joseph brings him from you know, beside his knees, so he's pushing them forward and, uh, you know, getting so, that, so that he can, and you know, he bows himself you know, because he's like, oh, this is disrespectful. I need to bring him forward. I'm, I'm going to bow myself. And then he's going to arrange him here for the blessing. So let's, uh, so let's look at these uh, next verses. Right, and Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, dotting his hands wittingly, for, for uh, Manasseh was firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be on the name of them. In the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw his father lay his right hand upon Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head and to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto him, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. I'll, I'll stop there for just a moment. So, you know, we see that uh, you know Joseph had taken the time to make sure that they were arranged. You know, the firstborn on the right side, and the uh, and you know the, the younger on the on the left on the left side. You know, expecting expecting that Jacob would reach out and, and bless with you know, right and left hand, but he crossed his hands to uh, you know. To, to bless the younger with the right hand and the older with the left hand, you know, which is which is out which out, which is out of the custom, which is why, which is why Joseph was like, well, what what are you doing, Father? You know, he, he expects that you know he's old and he can't see, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. But uh, let's 
Let's uh, read on in verse uh, you know, 19 here. Right, and his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He shall become a people and he shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And so you know, we see here that, uh, you know, again, it said, uh, you know, wittingly. So we see that uh, you know, Jacob knew that he, was, that he was blessing the younger Ephraim with the right hand and Manasseh with the left hand. And, you know, and he points out that even though you know, Manasseh is going to be great, it's going to be Ephraim that, that's, that's going to be greater than he, and, and his seed will become a multitude of nations. All right, and so uh, let's look on at, at 20 here. And he blessed them that day, saying, And thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he let Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given thee a portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the, of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Right, and so uh, you know, we, we see here that you know, he starts out and he, you know, he, he blesses you know, both, the, uh, both the sons. I'm going to go back here for, for just a moment to you know, look at you know, how he blessed them. You know, he, when, uh, you know, he blesses Joseph and he says, you know, he, he calls on God you know, of, of his fathers, Abraham and, and Isaac, that, that did walk. You know, the, the God which was you know, with him and fed him all his life. And, uh, and then he goes on and says, you know, the angel, you know, which, which redeemed me from all, from all evil. And he asked them to, to, and then he asked them to, you know, bless you know, all of them there. You know, let my name be on them. And, you know, the, and, you know, the name of my father is Isaac and Abraham. You know, basically, you know, re remember the promise uh, that, that you've given to Abraham and Isaac and myself and, and uh, you know, convey that unto, unto uh, Joseph and, and his children.